It's been weeks since I've made a deck good enough to make a video about. Weeks since the failure of Chancellor Crowler Control, my newest creation. Three different builds, hours spent searching for one replay of a build I once saw like it, non-stop workshopping with multiple people, and it's just... garbage. This deck is garbage. I mean, what kind of deck pulls off the effect of Hinokagu Suchi and still loses? The very thought beckons woe upon my fragile heart. I'm the girl who built The Rock. The girl who built Steinquish. People expect good decks from me, and I fail to deliver! Now I live a life of sorrow, and in my depression, I've begun to ponder life's deepest questions. Are warriors really hell it? Or do I just need to get good? Does MST negate? What does Pot of Green even do? Who am I? Serves me right for trying to brew in a 16-year-old format. Now I'm washed up. A nobody. A nothing. My inspiration is no more. My well of creativity is finally drained. Drained. Drain. Fuck it. Let's make a skill drain deck. Skill drain's pretty cool, right? I bet it would be good to play with Fusilor Dragon. 2800 beater, flip effects and negated and all that. What else works with skill drain? I don't know. Let's throw in this, and this, and maybe this, and... Oh. My. God. Yes! It's functional! Somehow this pile is functional! For so long had I given up hope! Like a lost lamb who strayed away from the flock, or like a goat player who thinks Ancient Gear Golem is playable. But now, with the help of a bunch of random cards that happen to work together, I have found my way. The Brewer is back, baby! I have risen again, like the Phoenix! Alright then, time to show a bunch of nerds playing a children's card game who's boss.
everyone, it is me, Pui, or Poi, just don't call me Pi, and I am back again with my new hotness, Fusilor Phoenix Drain. So, where did Fusilor Phoenix Drain come from? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I just wanted to build a deck uh, that started off with uh, Fusilor and Skill Drain. You know, it's a 2800 beater, opponent can't use effects. That's pretty oppressive against uh, a lot of decks in the format. So I thought that would be a good starting place. And then from there, we just sort of built top down uh, in this ridiculous pile. This is the third version of the deck. I actually made an entire other video for this deck with the second version, but there were necessary changes to be made. So here we are. This deck is tricky. It makes uh, simplified game states where hopefully you're beating down with something way bigger than anything your opponent is able to answer, and you're removing their things with your own answers pretty well as well. So let us start with Skill Drain. Of course, we are playing two Skill Drains. There is a third in the sideboard. Um, we can't play the third in the main deck because it actually will make us break in times when we're both in top deck mode, me and my opponent. So drawing the second Skill Drain there when you already have one it kind of kills you. So we're only playing two, but it's nonetheless a very important piece in the deck, and in some matchups you can bring in a third. Now, what does Skill Drain do to your own monsters in this deck? The answer is very little. A lot of these monsters, in fact almost all of these monsters, are entirely unaffected by Skill Drain. Of course we have Fusilor Dragon Dual Move Beast. You can summon it without tributing, if you do, its attack and defense are halved, but if you activate a skill drain and the skill drain resolves even for a moment while the fusilor is on the field, this card's attack becomes 2800 defense 2000 and it will stay that way even when skill drain leaves the field. So that is very useful, it is a very big monster. And similarly, we have one giant orc, which is a 2200 you can normal summon uh, if you attack with it and you don't have skill drain it's forced to defense mode, but if you do have skill drain, it's just a 2200 you can keep beating down with. Um, this card may seem out of place, it's smaller than Fusilor, um, the downside's a little weird, a little worse, there's definitely a reason that this is here and we'll get to it later. Now moving on, we've got Mystic Tomato, this is an effect that activates in the graveyard, so of course it's in. We've got Sangan, activates in the graveyard, Sinister Serpent, activates in the graveyard, We've got Eudoria activates in the graveyard. That's a tomato engine altogether, very useful. Then moving on, we have another class, which is Exiled Force and Hand of Neftis. Um, some of you may know that you may activate a card while Skill Drain is on the field. You may activate its effect. All that Skill Drain stops is the resolution of the effect if the monster is on the field. However, with Skill Drain, the cost of activating the effect is tributing it. And so Skill Drain uh, doesn't hit it because Exiled Force's ability resolves in the graveyard. Now, what I didn't realize at the time, however, when I put it in, is that Hand of Neftis works the exact same way. So, you tribute itself, you tribute one other monster, and that effect resolves in the graveyard, allowing you to summon Sacred Phoenix of Neftis even while Skill Drain is on the field. Um, people say it's a bit of a non-bow to have uh, a Phoenix with a Skill Drain, but they're not quite correct. Here. And this is a lot of what the strength of the deck ended up being, and I didn't even realize it when I was building it. But Sacred Phoenix of Neftis' first effect, the part about it reviving itself, activates in the graveyard and is not negated by Skill Drain. However, when it comes on the field, the board wipe half resolves, and that is negated by Skill Drain. So, if Skill Drain's on the field, you get it back, you don't board wipe. This sounds like a problem, it is a bit of a double-edged sword, because sometimes you really want to get rid of that back row. However, I found in my playing that a 2400 beater with a skill drain up, and one that revives itself every time it's destroyed by a card effect, usually it's a pretty good board state and you're going to be able to win anyway. So moving on, uh, we've got two skilled Dark Magicians. It's just a big monster, um, and its effect doesn't matter for the sake of our games at all. If it did, you'd actually be able to use this as well, as long as the spell counters were on it already before Skeldron activated. But the way we're just using it here is it's very big. Originally, I was playing three Regenerating Mummy because I really hate Delinquent Duo, and I wanted to um, be a little more duo-proof. However, that extra 100 attack 
uh, is really useful. There was a lot of times where people were summoning Kaiku, um, Ghost Destroyer, and running it into my mummy. So now that doesn't work anymore because this is bigger than that. The 1700 defense is also really useful. People are not expecting um, your monster to be set down because its defense is high. They're expecting flip effects or destroy effects. So sometimes they'll attack, they'll bite the bullet, they'll go, oh, you know, this is just a... Uh... Usually they'll think, oh, this is just a Tokoichi. Uh, and it's not, and they take some damage from that. Lastly, we've got one Breaker. This is the only monster whose effect is negated meaningfully by Skill Drain. However, if you look in the replays, you'll see this didn't really hurt me a lot. Usually, a uh, breaker is best in the early game when your opponent just sets one and passes, or T sets and passes, destroy the thing, swing in. Not often that I found I went, oh no, skill drains out, breakers negated, you know, game's over. Um, breaker's too good to pass up. And I'd say just in general when you're building decks, don't let synergy stop you from playing good cards once in a while. There are some times when obviously it's not the right choice, but in this case, for example, there's clearly an amount of play skill that can be put into making sure that these two things don't step on each other's toes. So I decided to go with it. Now, let's go on to the spells. We start off with two creature swap. We're playing a lot of monsters that activate in the graveyard. That means a lot of monsters that are pretty good to swap and then run over with whatever we stole. So, of course, the classic combo is with Tomato, or with Eudoria, or with Sangan. You can also do it with Serpent, then get it back next turn. Hand of Neftis is pretty small as well. Uh, even Exiled Force is pretty small. So feel free to swap, run something over. Pretty good value piece. Uh, we were also playing one Scapegoat in the main board, which goes with that as well. Turn it into attack, swap it. You know the drill. It also works pretty well with Hand of Neftis, because you contribute one of the tokens in order to summon Neftis. And it's just a decent amount of defense and helps you uh, rebuild your hand a bit if you're low on stuff. This deck sometimes gets a little stuck with cards that aren't going together, but are nonetheless in the hand. So you'll have three of hands, it doesn't have much of a move. Um, so Scapegoat helps stall just for a little bit if that's happening. We're playing, of course, two Noblemen of Crossout, and we're also playing two Smashing Ground. I really, really, really liked Smashing Ground. And the main change between the second version and the third version of the deck is that we added a second one. Um, this card's just so good. In the same way that Nobleman is a spell that says, I don't have to worry about your face down creature anymore, this is a spell that says, I don't have to worry about your face up creature anymore. Uh, it kills things that usually it would be very hard to kill with a deck like this. Um, it can kill King Dragon, can't be targeted, that's really useful. It can kill Jinzo, can kill BLS. Um, it kills a lot of things. So it also kills stuff that activates in the graveyard that our opponent has, like opponent Mystic Tomatoes, opponent's Giant Rats, stuff like that, without activating their effects. So I've really liked two Smashing Ground in this deck. Uh, and then besides that, we've got a lot of usuals. We've got Duo, we've got Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed, Mystical Space Typhoon, Heavy Storm, Premature Burial, Snatch Steel. You know what they are. They're the usual suspects. Moving on to the traps, we of course have our two Skill Drain. It's the main build around of the deck. It's the most important card. It shuts off all flip effects. It shuts off the Chaos Monsters, which is incredibly important with Neftis who will just get banished and won't be useful anymore. Um, it, it turns off so many things, it's so important. It's still a two of, for the reason I mentioned before. If you want the third, it's in the sideboard. If you want to put it in the main board, be my guest. We are playing two Solemn Judgment to just negate any stragglers. In decks with simple game states, this is a useful thing to do. I don't know how I feel about Solemn in this deck. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. If you want to do something else with it, uh, feel free. This would certainly be the card to replace with that third skill drain, I think. But that is up to you playing this deck. We've of course got Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, Torrential Tribute. These are great cards. We're also playing Magic Cylinder as the fourth honorary, uh, I don't know, Trap Trinity one of. I really like this card in this deck. I feel like the game states that this deck creates are ones where our opponent just tries to attack with a very big thing, one even bigger than ours. Attacking with the BLS is all they can do with the BLS once you've negated its abilities, and so Magic Cylinder helps you win that game because it deals them a massive amount of damage. And if you put it together with Ring of Destruction, these cards together can probably end the game just on their own, which is really, really great. Um, and lastly, we've got one Dust Tornado, one Sakuretsu armor just for a little more monster removal and a little more spell and trap removal. So that's the main deck, and let's move on to the sideboard. So in the sideboard, we've got the third Fuseler, 
and we've got the, the second giant orc. And these are meant to go with a third skill drain and deck devastation virus. Uh, one of, because of course it's limited. In some decks, if you resolve this card, they quit the game. I've got replays from the old version of the deck where I've activated this card twice in one matchup, and one of them was really early in the game, and they just packed it up and left. That was the game. Um, it destroys all the small monsters on the field. It destroys all the small monsters in the hand. This card will probably end the game against Chaos Turbo pretty handedly, especially if you manage to get the skill drain for the Chaos Monster. You will obliterate their hand, and we can easily support this because a Giant Orc or a Skill Drain Fusilor can both uh, be tributed for the virus. So that is that plan. That is definitely something I do against Chaos Control, Chaos Turbo, sometimes against Goat Control. Also against Goat Control, we've got two Possessed Dark Souls. Um, this deck's not the greatest at dealing with Scapegoat because it's playing one monster at a time. Of course, we do have Skill Drain to deal with a Thousand Eyes Restrict if they metamorphosis a goat, but even just having the goat sit there and letting them stall for time is kind of bad for us. So Possess Zol turns that against them. We get to steal their goats. We get to use them on our own metamorphosis. We get to use them on our own Hand of Neftis. Pretty useful. Speaking of, we have two metamorphosis and two Scapegoats. So if you're in a matchup where skill drain is not the most helpful particularly i found warriors it's not too great because not many of their effects are what's important about the cards as much as they're big really only don zalug is the one warrior where it's like oh yes we'd like to turn that effect off and generally we don't need it that bad especially if we have scapegoat this is a lot better in those matchups because you just defend yourself and then you get to use metamorphosis and you get to steal their monster and attack with it back it also helps you use Hand of Neftis easier, which Sacred Phoenix of Neftis against Warriors is a good time. They don't have a lot to remove it, and if they do remove it with the stuff that shouldn't remove it, they're going to lose all of their back row. You saw that in one of the replays. Uh, Neftis just obliterated a Warrior player. That replay felt so good. You may have noticed that there was a Possessed Dark Soul on the main board in that replay. Um, that was a maybe an older build, but I couldn't resist putting that replay in because that just felt so good, just obliterating warriors like that. We have an extra Dust Tornado for heavy back row decks like warriors. We've got an extra Solemn Judgment against combo decks, and we also have three Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell. Helps against Library, helps against Jar, helps against Reason Gate. So I thought it would be worth it as an answer for unfair decks. And with that, this is Fusilor Phoenix Drain. I've liked this deck a lot. It's been fun to play. It does some crazy wacky stuff. It can be crazy repressive when you've got just Skill Drain and Fusilor's beating in. Phoenix is beating in. You're doing creature swap tricks. This deck could be taken in a couple of directions if you wanted to. If you wanted to be more... I don't know, zombies-ish, and do a lot more creature swap and graveyard tricks, maybe add in actual pyramid turtles and vampire lords. Vampire lords effect will also work through skill drain, um, so that's a direction you could go. If you want to go more skill drain beat down, you can definitely add more fuselers, more giant orcs, maybe a Zumbira the Dark, and at that point you could put the virus in the main board. That's a direction too. However, I just wanted to keep this a little more versatile. I wanted to see what sort of answers were around, and those two decks had some more clear weaknesses. This deck's been pretty good, gotten some decent wins in the ladder. I've been a fan, and I hope you'll try it out and see what sort of stuff you'd like to do, because I've been trying to play Phoenix at Neftis for a really long time, and I think this is a decent home, uh, and I hope you do too. So with that, thank you for watching. As always, I'd like to thank Jinzo and Tonic for featuring me on his channel. You should like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. And you should also join his Discord if you're a Discord user. I'd like to also thank MMF for bringing this deck from version 1 to version 2. It was a big change, really improved a lot of things, so I appreciate that a lot. Uh, that's all my thank yous. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day.